A very good morning to you. Glad you could join us on Your World. And as I mentioned, as we concluded AM Live together with my panelists, we are discussing overcoming the midlife crisis. And with me in the studio, I have actually two psychologists. Yeah. Yeah. So I have uh, Catherine um, Kidaka. Sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> and we have Julia Scuti, who only, not only is a psychologist, is also, you teach yeah, yeah, psychology. Uh, psychology, yes. Yes. Mm. So, midlife mm -hmm. crisis, is this a real thing? The only thing I know about it, personally speaking, is, uh, should I make the, should I have used doctor, doctor? <laughs> or Whatever. It's fine. It's uh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> it's all right. The, it's okay. Catherine, the, what, what is what I see in the movies. Mm. Um, that somebody who's going through a midlife crisis happens maybe in their 40s, late 40s. Yes. And, and it's a fear of growing old. And I, I, this is just in my mind, mm -hmm. right? That it affects men mm -hmm. and that they want to go out and buy a fast car and they want to trade up to, the new, to new models even where their companions are concerned. Uh, you, you got the pun? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Catherine, what is this midlife about? Uh, thank you for having us here and uh, good morning viewers and then actually it's a real thing allow me just to mention that even the psychologist uh -huh. we have a renowned psychologist by name Eric Erickson uh -huh. he talked about developmental stages and one of those <clears throat> is what we call generativity vis-a-vis -vis stagnation and midlife crisis falls in that stage so it's not just something that is made up it doesn't just affect men, uh -huh. it affects women as well. Really? Sure. Yeah. Like Cher, who's dating a 30 some or a 40 year old man. We'll get to that. We'll get to okay. that. Mm -hmm. We'll get to that. Mm. So it's not just um, a thought, it's something that happens, it's real, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. I need to give you hope. It doesn't have to be. Uh -huh. Know that everyone must go through midlife crisis. Okay. When you manage well, particularly the stages before, then you don't have to get into that deep. You know, it, it looks, life looks like a you. Uh -huh. So you start on a high, uh -huh. then midlife crisis is at the low, at the bottom, if it's not well managed, but you can bounce back. But it doesn't have to be that way. Uh -huh. So it is real and oh. it happens. Uh -huh. But it's not a disorder per se, uh -huh. just to give you hope. Mm -hmm. But it's just a psychological aspect um, that affects people. Mm. Yeah. So it's a real thing. It's, a it's real not thing. imagined. It's not imagined. It's a real thing. Sure. Julius, you agree? Yeah, I agree totally. Uh -huh. It's a real life experience. Mm -hmm. And as she said, um, it, there are some people who experience it so seriously, mm -hmm. uh, depending on you know their past preparation or not being prepared in the past. And there are some other people who do not even go through it at all. <coughs> So you. If, you, if you expect it to go, you know, everyone to go through it, mm -hmm. uh, you will be wrong. So <laughs> you'll be wrong. So there are people who do not go through it. Mm -hmm. They actually hear about it like you do. But there are those other people who are really affected by it who need help. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good that you have uh, called us here so that we may, you know, talk about it. So that somebody somewhere there will know, oh, yeah, there is hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is mm -hmm. hope. Because some people face it with a lot of hopeless, hopelessness. They are pro oppressed and it's like, what am I going to do next? Mm. Yes. All right. So, mm. Catherine. Yeah. What is so that one mm -hmm. this midlife crisis? Yes. What is it? Midlife crisis. It's um, basically it's a transitional phase. I'll put it that way. Uh, mainly between forties and sixties. So, first of all, it's just transition. Like I said, there is developmental stage. Mm -hmm. But the reason it's called a crisis is when that particular phase of life is not very well uh, managed. And it comes about from many things. And like I said, particularly if the first phase of life hasn't been dealt with very well. Say, for instance, career-wise. Mm -hmm. Uh, the societal expectations is that by the time you're 40, I'm just giving, uh -huh. it doesn't mean that it has to be this way, yes. or you've already married, you already have your home, you already have your children doing, what happens to that person who is not even married? I'm just giving an example. So when certain things, the societal norms are not met, 
an individual may find themselves in a crisis, in that state of refraction, uh -huh. you know, refracting and thinking like, I I'm not doing well, I'm not where society expects me to be. And it's both internal and external. Internally, you may feel so, that you're not there. You're not where you ought to be, but also the societal expectation could also make somebody get into that space. So it's a moment of reflection, introspection, where someone is feeling, I think I'm not where I ought to be. It comes, and I hope we'll be talking about this, how you can tell that, that you're, you're going, going through a midlife crisis. Through crisis. It doesn't yes. sound so bad <laughs> if it's a period of reflection and introspection. Shouldn't no, we yeah. all be doing that? Uh, what is that? Introspection and reflection. Yeah, we should do that. But you see, it depends on the way you approach it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, you some of the some of the people will not know how to do reflection uh, because they do they are not you know they are not prepared for it. But once you are prepared for it, then it doesn't really become a bother to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is a period that can be managed by 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 people if they have been prepared in advance. The only thing that comes in, in people's life is when you face it like you are not prepared and you are, this is, this is you and it. Mm -hmm. Because as she said, as Catherine said, it's a period of development where you sometimes you get into that period without even knowing. And you are there, you have a family, you don't know how to behave, you, you have you know, aspirations that are not coming true, you have goals that are not even you know being fulfilled and it's like now so what next mm -hmm. what am i going to do and that's where people start panicking and uh, life starts changing and they start behaving funny i think those are the things <laughs> we <laughs> behaving <Yeah>. funny <laughs> I am what are the symptoms how do i know i am going through a midlife crisis wow that's a very good question um i think the first and foremost is that it comes like a form of panic. Mm -hmm. You know, suddenly I am 40, I am 50. You know, just like that moment of, you know, like a panic mode kind of a thing. Uh, but uh, others would be, you know, introspection and that comes with anxiety, comes with fear, comes with just a sense of hopelessness. It comes with uh, even behavioral change. Mm -hmm. um, suddenly, uh, the hairline is declining, uh. and as somebody was saying, you have an airport, uh -huh. and you're thinking, I'm no longer the handsome guy I'm that sorry, I was. That is so funny. <laughs> somebody mentioned that yesterday. <laughs> I've never had that one. Thanks for that. The airport. Yes. The airport. The airport. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh -huh. So physical changes as well. So. Uh -huh. I think all those, so you look at yourself and there's lack of acceptance mm. that my hair is suddenly silver, that suddenly I had children around me to keep me busy because my relationship with my partner is not working, they are not there, it's an emptiness. So mm -hmm. there's that a state of feeling, you know, hopeless, empty, lack of vigor, lack of, you know, the, 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 the goal, the drive that one has had uh, previously. So it mainly comes in emotionally so the emotional state of feeling you're not where you ought to be and like i said it's both internally and also people's expectations so you meet with your colleagues for instance uh so they are doing very well for themselves and mm -hmm. you feel like you're not there as a person mm -hmm. so that, that sense of hopelessness is, is is the major sign that one would be going through a midlife crisis but also certain changes that happens and certain mm. decisions mm. that one may find themselves making uh, particularly financial decisions because you feel you are not there as far as your finances are concerned so you may find somebody won't just suddenly to take this loan take the other loan invest because they are trying to catch up with something that they may have missed so you mm. find some unhealthy kind of decisions mm -hmm. that are made. Mm -hmm. Another would be because of the feeling of inadequacy, someone is working so hard to work on their parents. Mm -hmm. You know, suddenly I want this kind of dressing, you know, I, I, someone feels like I have missed some youthful years, so I want to fit in, I want to match, so that the way someone dresses 
um, you know, and not to say that looking good is a problem, but mm -hmm. you're saying you may find somebody uh, just suddenly, there's something that is actually not working out well. Mm. So emotionally, physically, the decisions that they make, mm. but uh, maybe one more, I'll, I'll talk about um, the, the, you know, the actions that people take. So we've seen um, without due respect, so someone has, you know, a man would want some extra support, you know, uh -huh. they're called out, side chicks uh -huh. and all that, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> because they are seeking out affirmation. Inside themselves, they feel empty. Uh -huh. So they feel by going for this younger girl, uh -huh. or this younger man, uh -huh. uh, they will help me feel better. Uh -huh. They'll validate me. Mm -hmm. They'll make me feel better. So some of those decisions that people make, may be a sign that someone is going through midlife crisis. crisis. And yeah. maybe it went on mm. to that, uh, mm -hmm. or, or, Olive? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Olive. You did mm -hmm. not tell us. Oh, that. I'm sorry. I'm sitting <laughs> in for Winnie Lubembe. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. May, maybe it went on to what Catherine is saying. We And this is why it is called actually emotional and, you know, psychological and emotional turmoil. Mm -hmm. That is a, a season of, you know, turbulence or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, the... M maybe to add on to that is another sign is like um, exaggerated uh, cosmetics and especially for ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> because, because you are concerned about your appearance, it's like you are aging, you have realized uh -huh. you are aging and you don't look the way you want it to look like uh -huh. and you don't think you attract people the way you would have attracted them. Uh -huh. So it's like I have to do something to make myself what whom I would like to be. Uh -huh. And I think that's what she was talking about. Uh -huh. And there are so many other things. I support what she's talking about, about the side chicks. Uh -huh. I think it's a sign of identity that I can also win a younger mm -hmm. girl and identify with her and all that. And you are proud of that. You, you feel like you have added value to yourself. Yes. These are some of the signs. So what? sort of what I'm hearing is mm -hmm. you're looking to recapture maybe your youth because you, yes. you feel you, you lost, you missed out on something. Sure. Is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so you are unfulfilled that uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I did not mm -hmm. accomplish that. Mm -hmm. But there's a way I think I can do it. Mm -hmm. Including buying a very expensive car mm -hmm. and sports car mm -hmm. and like so that men will look at you and say, yes, this man is there. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so these are things. These are the symptoms. Is, and the this, signs. is this necessarily a bad thing? You want to look good? You want to drive the latest vehicle that we see you on the road, we step aside, Peter Kwanza, uh -huh. we, we, you, <laughs> Peter Kwanza. Yeah, Peter Kwanza, you, yeah. you want somebody who looks good on your arm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really sound that bad, Catherine. Um, what's the motive? If one, and there's definitely nothing wrong in getting the latest car in the market and all that, but what's the motive? If I'm doing that because... <clears throat> it's part of where I am. Um, we talk about the, the hierarchy of needs, the Maslow hierarchy of needs. I want to believe we've heard about that. Eh? So if I have been able to meet my basic needs and now I'm walking towards actualization, then it's okay mm. that I get this car, I live in this neighborhood, that's okay. But if one is doing it because they are feeling a void within themselves, uh. the motive, and as uh -huh. I said, you uh -huh. find that uh, someone would take a loan just to buy this car. And the reason they are doing that is because my boys are out driving this and the other. Mm. So the intentions, the motive mm. is all wrong. Mm -hmm. If it's about trying to fit in, mm -hmm. fill that void, uh, feeling a sense of inadequacy, then that's where the problem comes. But if you're there, and even if it's a chopper, leave a own car, it's fine. If it's part of actualizing, yes. then that is okay. So the motive matters here. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, uh, there's this, uh, what do we call it? Mm. The cheers baba kit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you know? But what I'm hearing is that what your, 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 your proponents of self acceptance mm. is, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. mm. Julius. But if I want, if I'm not happy with where I am, mm. and, and I'll ask the same question I've asked Catherine, mm. if I'm mm. not yes. happy with where I am, mm. and I want something better, and, and I, I look at the clock and I realize time is running out, yes. I need to act and I need to act now. Aren't, isn't that what all these self help books are about? Believe yeah. in yourself, yes. trust yourself, take that leap of. Faith, take that loan, buy that car, you only live once. <laughs> yeah, th you are right. You are right taking that loan, but uh, you need to do it carefully mm -hmm. because you need to only take a loan that you can repay. 
and that you can afford and mm -hmm. with the right motive. Uh -huh. Again, again, I think it's important even for the viewers to hear that uh, when you get into this stage of life and you realize that you are going through challenges, you need actually to get help from people, you know, from you know, professionals. Mm -hmm. And they will tell you, like, uh, you know, psycholog like psychologists, they will help you get to where you want to know and make the right decisions. Because what is wrong, Olive, is mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, I, where, where the problem is, is that uh, people just realize that uh, the clock is actually ticking. ticking. Mm -hmm. And it's like I am late and my, my peers are ahead of me, far ahead of me. That spirit of comparison. Mm -hmm. People need to know that we are unique. We cannot walk at the same speed. We are not, I mean, well, the society can expect us to do this at this particular age. Mm. But is that really what happens in real life? No. Everyone lives his own life. And therefore, it's important for one to accept who he is. And then don't compare yourself with other people, though you need, of course, to emulate some of them. But live your own life and do what you are able to do mm -hmm. at peace. The issue is at peace, mm -hmm. not causing crisis mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like there's some mm -hmm. sense of dissatisfaction and, mm -hmm. and internal sure. turmoil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is what you're saying needs to be addressed. Needs mm -hmm. to be addressed. The causal issues. Mm -hmm. Yes. And actually, the, um, the, the sad part about it is that um, in psychology, we talk about the presenting issue and the underlying issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So by the time I'm picking this loan, because I want to fit in, mm -hmm. I'm just dealing with the presenting issue that I am not equal with my peers. Mm. But what is the underlying issue? What is beneath that feeling? Mm -hmm. So it could be that your career progression hasn't moved like maybe you expected it. It could be because I know we've talked about the money aspect so much, mm. even the family front. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be that um, someone has gone through a life event. There has been divorce, there has been separation. So mm. because I am divorced or have separated, so the next thing I will do quick, quick is get into another relationship. So, mm. so I, I think for me is to address the root cause. What is underneath as opposed to addressing the presenting issue because the presenting issue is how I feel that I'm not fitting mm. with my peers or I am not where everyone else expects to me. It's about dealing with the real issue. You know the iceberg? Mm -hmm. What is beneath there? Deal mm. with that. So so is it a loss that has happened? Process that loss. Is it a marriage, a relationship that hasn't worked? Um, seek to find out how did I get to this point is it um, maybe even health you know I've just been diagnosed with mm -hmm. this and this condition mm -hmm. so what about I deal with the underlying issue so for me it's um, not so much about what is on the surface but connecting with self internally the emotional aspect what exactly is going on and then deal with it from that point Deal with it from uh, that point. Yes. Olive, I feel, uh, uh, as she, she says, mm -hmm. the key thing in this is actually self-awareness. Okay. Do you know yourself? Do you understand your values? Do you know where you are going? Do you know? That's so that you discover, like, what is actually the cause of all this, this type of turmoil. Where is it coming from? And then the second to that mm -hmm. is how can i get help and i think that's where the problem comes in mm. and i'm glad that uh, this program has been brought around so that at least the few that are listening mm -hmm. will know that there is when you face the answer to where can i get help from it's get it from the professional get, get it from the support group you know the families you know family members can help a lot because when one is going through challenges the first people to see them is the family members the very close friends and the peers, people that you live with, mm. you see? And if you are fortunate enough to talk to somebody who can direct you to a professional, then you know that there are some therapists who can take you through professional steps to be able to discover yourself and then be able to work with the challenge. And then you are like, yes, I think the speed that I was traveling at mm -hmm. was too high for mm -hmm. me as at mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I mean, because we, we've, ad I, I know I've made a lot of fun, but <laughs> I, I know you, you, you're trying to bring out the risky behavior yeah. that is associated with, mm -hmm. with the midlife mm -hmm. crisis. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, are there mental disorders uh, attached as well? A sense of depression, yeah. a sense yeah. 
of anxiety? Sure. Yes, sure. Um, and, and actually, like you mentioned, and, and I need to be very careful that, um, you know, the society, you know, everyone says I'm depressed. Eh? It's mm -hmm. become a very casual mm -hmm. uh, thing that people say, oh, I, I suffer from anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, so it is good to be careful. And like mm -hmm. my colleague was saying, uh, yes, there is that sense. Definitely someone can tell I am not okay emotionally because you look at the signs uh, and some of the signs that one would be looking out for, for an emotional or a mental uh, disorder in that case. Uh, so, say sleep patterns, you know, mm -hmm. that feeling of hopelessness, mm -hmm. uh, that feeling of uh, always anxious, you know, always on the move, never settling, mm -hmm. never able to settle or to rest, you know. There's, you could be asleep, but mm -hmm. you're still very tired mm -hmm. because you haven't quite rested. So, I, I think for me... Your mind yes, is always... Your mind yeah. is always... You're racing. Engaged. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a race against mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So, you're never settling. You mm -hmm. are restless. You're mm -hmm. moving from, you know, even... Investment, for instance, so you start this, you can't wait for it to mature, you move to the next and you move to the next because you're internally, like you said, in turmoil, mm -hmm. you're not settled. So midlife can, when it's not managed, can result into serious mental conditions, like you talked about, um, you know, depression, mm. anxiety, panic attacks. Mm. But before, and then to our viewers, before we can diagnose ourselves, I think I am stressed. Mm -hmm. I think it's important when you feel or when somebody feels, I think I'm, I'm not okay, mm. just to seek out for help. Mm -hmm. And then that's speak the things that we do, speak sure. to a professional, mm -hmm. um, just to be assessed professionally, to be able to be taken through. And then some of these things may not even require, you know, the medication. I think mm -hmm. there is a notion out there that once I go there, I am done. Mm -hmm. No, it might be something as simple as self-care, mm -hmm. you know, practicing mindfulness, practicing relaxation techniques. So it doesn't have to be so major. It may just be changing your pattern, working on your routine, mm -hmm. you know, just something that is within our scope, mm -hmm. but that can be well guided by a professional. But what you're saying, yes, mm -hmm. if one is not managing midlife crisis well, it could easily result into, you know, the anxiety and the depression. And I think the reason we are having all the homicides, you know, uh, cases where one kills themselves, kills their family, because they could be just be dealing with a midlife crisis. I am here, mm -hmm. I can support my family, I can mm -hmm. educate my children. So I think it's when one feels, I think there's a problem mm -hmm. somewhere, seek out for help. And then we are happy. We are happy. We come from Osmos. We are happy also. You know, mm. there are many other professionals out there mm. who are happy to walk somebody uh, through their journey. Mm. Yeah. And I think, I think mm. before we conclude that, uh, um, Olive, mm -hmm. I, I was trying to remember <laughs> the name. <laughs> uh, it, it's as Catherine talks about it, the, you know, the depression, the mental health uh, issues, one thing you realize is that when one is having mental health issues, he may not know that he has a problem. Mm -hmm. He may feel very normal mm -hmm. because you, he is himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see any problem. He's operating normally like that. I think we also need to encourage, and especially the viewers, to really be observant on their friends who mm -hmm. are around them. Mm -hmm. Because you can know when I am not functioning the way mm -hmm. I am being mm -hmm. functioning. Mm -hmm. You are able to tell the family members and even the friends mm -hmm. will be able to say, this man, mm -hmm. they, these days, mm -hmm. I don't think he's doing well. That mm -hmm. is now where it begins. Before I come to report mm -hmm. myself, I have a problem mm -hmm. like that. And so it's very important for us mm -hmm. to okay. do that. If the reality is not changing, if mm -hmm. this is the situation, oh, I'm sorry, I have, I have to take a break, but uh, we will continue with this conversation <laughs> because is, is there mm -hmm. a way to harness this restlessness? I'm not happy with where I am mm -hmm. in a positive way mm -hmm. such that I, I initiate the changes I need to make mm -hmm. um, to get where I, I want to go. Mm -hmm. So is, it, is there a way to harness that sure. for good? Mm -hmm. And then also, if, if, if my reality is what it is, mm -hmm. how do I get to the point of self-acceptance uh -huh. on the other side of this break. Mm. Okay.
On this edition of EdTech Mondays Kenya, we are taking a closer look at what it truly takes to create digital tools that not only enhance but also empower and elevate the teaching experience. What are you seeing as some of the key drivers to make sure that these tools actually meet the needs of the teachers? One of the most important things that the digital tool should have is relevant content. For me, the most important thing is that the teacher capacity is built very well to fit with the fourth industrial revolution. At what point do you bring the teacher in? The teacher needs to be there from the beginning. Join us as we explore this insightful conversation on Monday 30th October 2023 at 6 p.m. East African time on NTV and thereafter on the MasterCard Foundation's YouTube channel. Always fresh. Nivea Fresh Dio. Now with new Infinity Fresh technology. Antibacterial power with 48 hour protection and long lasting freshness. Nivea Fresh Dio. Feel fresh in every moment. Try new Nivea Fresh Sensation Dio. Our freshest fragrance with 72 hour antiperspirant protection. In a world that's constantly on the move, where every day counts. It's time to pause, reflect, and secure your tomorrow. It's more than just setting money aside. It's about building a foundation for your dreams. This Tuesday, in celebration of World Savings Day, NTV engages strategic partners, prominent experts, and a renowned moderator for a live panel discussion to dive deep into the world of savings in Kenya. Catch the discussion live on NTV and simultaneously stream on our social media platforms this Tuesday, 31st October from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. and find out why savings are important and get advice to help you make the most of your hard-earned money. What's that? I brought you a small bonus. Bonus for what? You got us 299 family dinners, 64 kisses on the cheek, 12 road trips to see grandma, 42 jokes from daddy, 49 laughs from mommy. In over 60 years of dealing with numbers, we've learned that the numbers that matter the most to you are the ones that matter the most to us. NCBA Bank. Go for it. All holders are notified to report and surrender unclaimed financial assets to the Unclaimed Financial Assets Authority, UFAA, on or before November 1st, 2023. Visit www.ufaa.go.ke and get started. Very good morning to you. Welcome to your world. If you're just joining us, if you've been with us, you already know that we've been discussing overcoming the midlife crisis. And just from having this conversation, I feel like I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> I may feel like, I, I mean, I feel like I'm about to hyperventilate. But we have in studio Catherine Kidaka, and we also have Julius Kuti, uh, psychologists and also psychology lecturer. Where do you lecture? I'm um, Greta University. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, I mean, but I can imagine the sense of mm. wanting to hyperventilate if you feel like hujajipanga mm. unafa in terms of okay if I lose my job today I'm mm. this age can I get another job how will I sustain myself how will I sustain my my family into my twilight you know mm. so I can understand that sense of helplessness mm. how can we harness that feeling of restlessness for good Catherine um, thank you. That's a very uh, good direction that we are taking our viewers. 
I think first and foremost is to embrace reality. Mm. Um, unfortunately, we tend to live in, in a bubble. Like, there is what we perceive, what we think should be happening, but what is your reality? Your reality could be, I will be retiring in the next three years, and I'm here to do A, B, C, D. Your reality could be, I have this, even terminal illness, or my marriage has just ended. So it could come in different mm. dimensions. So for me, uh, first and foremost is embrace the reality. Um, not to say we don't have dreams, but just to know this is where I am. So first, embrace reality. Secondly, I would say, uh, what about reevaluate one's values, one's goals? I may have had these gladder visions, you know, when I was young. You know, by 20, I would do this. By 30, I would, both, I would do this. Uh, but are those values and goals realistic, or have they been attained? They may not have been attained. So once we have embraced that this is where I am, secondly, reevaluate the values, the aspirations, the goals, what has worked, what hasn't worked, and what can I do with where I am. So to give a case example, so I started this business, it didn't work. Mm. I still have a loan to repay. So what is the reevaluation that I can do? What about I'm living in this neighborhood, I'm paying this amount of money, what about I move to maybe a slightly cheaper house? I'm just giving an example. So embrace the reality, Reevaluate your values and your goals just to help you now move with what you have. But maybe from there, the other thing would be, you know, seek help. Mm -hmm. And then help doesn't have to be the monetary aspect. We've talked about the psychological aspect. Have somebody, a professional to work with you to help you process that. Because um, we talk about loss, eh? you know, loss we think is dead. But even our lives themselves, we could be going through loss. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a loss that I had this dream or I had this job, I had this status quo in mm -hmm. the society, but now I've been fired, so mm -hmm. I don't have a job. So how do I then reevaluate my values and my aspirations to get to where then I want to go. So I think for me, once we are comfortable in that space, then we'll be able to move forward because help is available. Professionals will help you to walk through the next phase of your life. Uh, like he, my colleague said, family will help. Uh, there are mentors, there are support groups out there. You know, if it's a, a terminal illness, there are support groups that can help you, you know, manage your moment and still live a productive life. So I think it's just embrace the reality, reevaluate, see what can work, and then move forward with help. The way we cope is so important. So you may find somebody because I have lost my job, I'll drink my, I'll drink or I'll take mm -hmm. this other coping mechanism that is not right. So that doesn't help. It just makes things even worse. So as you seek help, you're helped, you're supported to deal with the issue in a better way. Mm -hmm. And self-awareness, like you said, you know, just self-awareness. What are your limits? What can I handle? What can I not handle? So that self-awareness is also very, very important. So those will be my three uh, key pointers for, for that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, mm -hmm. I imagine, how do you deal with not comparing yourself? Because you're talking about self-awareness, self-acceptance. <laughs> but it is yes. human to compare yourself uh, to your peers, and especially mm. now with social media. Mm. And and uh, let's say you go on social media, hi, Bernard Dong. You see Bernard Dong very busy at the gym. is <laughs> jumping on, on, on um, um, blogs. Mm. Julian Zamboko is mm. tweeting about market and things like finance, mm. inv financial mm. investments. And you're like, mm. what, what is that? I don't even know the definition. I mean, you know, so you see, and then maybe you see somebody and they're happy with their family. No, no Julie's like, what me? Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you deal with with, with I know you, you not said comparing yourself to others to other people yes I'm glad you have even mentioned the social media comparison and mm -hmm. all that and the things that you watch mm -hmm. uh, it's good even for the viewers to hear this because we are all in the social media you will realize that when you get into the social media uh, Olive will pro portray our best you know uh, the best of our life. Sometimes we do not know Olive, but 
we, she exaggerates what she's showing us and we are there admiring and comparing ourselves with her and like and i think that is now what is spoiling people so you end up you know provoking the feeling that yes i am left behind i think i'm not doing well i think i'm not good enough and from that time you are like looking at yourself from a negative perspective i think it's important as we talk about um, accepting reality who mm -hmm. am i as kuti now who am i this is who i am i look at my finances i cannot afford an helicopter <laughs> so this is me i cannot live in a certain you know uh, neighborhood or something like that and therefore when i accept who i am then as she has said i will be able now to say yes so what do i do then i will live the kind of life that i can live and that which will give me peace and that which will identify clearly who i am so that you don't live in assumption mm -hmm. you don't live somebody's life and you are you know when you live somebody's life you live struggling mm -hmm. borrowing paying and every time borrowing from there are people who live like that they live on borrowing they pick from you to pay the lord they pick from somebody else to pay mm -hmm. somebody else like mm -hmm. that that's not life that's how you must end up with problems and challenges so what do you do to get yourself out of this and out of comparing yourself with other people is one accept who you are number two you are supposed to now to as she has said reevaluate your goals there are goals that you set before and uh, some of them are not working. Some of them you are struggling to achieve. You need to know what kind of goals mm -hmm. I can achieve within and give any time as at now. Mm -hmm. it is, I am now 57. I'm retiring in three years. So what are some of the financial goals that I can set? Mm -hmm. Can I build a story beauty with this kind of salary? No, I can't. So I will not compare myself with any other person, a friend mm -hmm. who has built two story okay. buildings. Mm -hmm. We are the same age mm -hmm. and maybe we were in the same class. Mm -hmm. So. Accepting yourself and living your own life is the most important thing. And also, have realistic expectations about yourself. Not what people want. Because you may not be able to satisfy the society. Society will really mm. expect a lot from you. But what are your expectations according to your goals as a person? Mm -hmm. You see? So when you look at your life that way, you'll be able to approach it in your own personal mm -hmm. way and that will satisfy you number two you are you are not supposed to be there to answer questions about the society there mm -hmm. are people who do not seek help not because they cannot seek help but because they are asking what will people say mm -hmm. i've been in nairobi all my years people think i am a tycoon i'm driving a good car and they think i have a lot of money kumbe it's from borrowed money and uh, you are stressing, I mean you are stressed and you don't know what to do. So mm -hmm. what will people say? That question has destroyed many people. Mm -hmm. So for the people and especially the viewers who care for themselves, because there are people who don't care for themselves. I mm -hmm. mean there are people who are careless and that's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. We are supposed to care for ourselves. For the viewers that care for themselves, you are supposed to ask yourself, yes, people will have something to say. Even when you have not told them anything, they will still say, say something. Mm -hmm. But what about me for my own good? Mm -hmm. How can I get help? And how can I get out of the present situation of a challenge? Mm -hmm. That's where we need now to seek for help. Right from friends and right from the professionals and right from wherever you get help from. Mm -hmm. We run away from seeking help because we feel like, I think she knows, Catherine knows that I looks, looks at me like I have a lot of money, mm. I am well mm. off and mm. it's like I'm satisfied mm -hmm. with what I'm doing. What will she say when I seek help? Mm. It's important for us to seek help because it's for your own good. Mm. Remember, life belongs to you and it doesn't belong to the community. It belongs to you. When you destroy it, you destroy it alone. Mm. When you save it, you are save it for your own good. Mm. And of course, mm. you don't have to please anybody. How Next much of we, this comes from? Sorry, sorry. Uh, you wanted to add something, and then yeah, I can just, ask a question yes, after. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, just just one, a brief one, and it's something I call accepting imperfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have been wired as a society, you know, be the best you can, dream until you fake it until you live, you know, you make it, those, uh, yeah, until you make fake it, it until you make it. But we need to get to that point where we can accept imperfection. That I hoped to get it this way, I haven't made it. To that point, I haven't achieved that target. I pe I accept a lesser, you know. Just mm -hmm. not to say that we don't 
dream and we don't strive, but when things don't work, let's seek to accept imperfection. And secondly, to finish up on that, in the moment of now re-engineering ourselves, mm. let's do it, you know, small bits, you know, take small mm. steps. We call them baby steps, yeah? Mm. You know, you are, like he said, you are 57, and you want to build a story building, and your contract is ending in the next two and a half years. Is it realistic? Maybe not. What about, instead of the story, do I start with fast flow or something? So starting, you know, baby steps, you know, small steps, uh, so some bit of a revised kind of goal. So for me, those two things, accepting imperfection. Mm. And we say in psychology, it is okay not to be okay. So mm. accept I didn't achieve it, mm. and I am okay with that. All and right. then take small steps towards achieving what you are able to do. I know we've really mm. talked about this internal turmoil, mm. but then how much of this is informed by societal pressure, external factors? You know, you're hanging around your friends, like you said, mm. and they're discussing the buildings, the, mm. the rent they're collecting from their property. Mm. Um, you're like, hey? <laughs> hey? I, I mean, so, and how do you navigate that? Even if outside the, the finances, mm. because I know mm. you keep mentioning yes, that. Yes. Mm. Um, for example, you're, you you you've reached you're a woman you've reached what forty something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have the family people expected you to have. Uh, they, your 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 aunties keep reminding you you no longer have that glow of youthful mm -hmm. glow. You know, so you're seen like who's going to take care of you when you're old? You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate? So that societal pressure. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, a, a very good question, uh, Olive. Um, for me, two things, and sorry, we'll keep going back to the point of acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, for me, how to deal with the society is knowing who you are. Unfortunately, we tend to live for others. Um, you know, if you come into this office, you're very smart, and your colleague doesn't say that. So deep down, you know you're smart, but your colleague didn't appreciate that. So, or even in the family setup. Eh? So for me, it's uh, first and foremost, just know who you are, honestly. So this is the reality. Um, I am this age, I don't have a child. The society expects that by this age, I need to be married, have a child, have a career doing, and all that. So accept that that is a societal expectations, but I'm not there. But not to leave it at that. What can I do? Because I believe there is always a solution around every other situation. So if it's about family, who will take care of me in old age, then that might be the time to invest wisely. You know, the, the children, you know, they are, nowadays it's called the black tax, eh? mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if I don't have anyone to give the black tax to, then what about I know that I may not have a child to take care of me in old age, so do I invest wisely? So I need to invest wisely. You know, those, those investments where, um, you know, I don't need to be there, you know, the money working for you kind of a thing. So it's just to know this is where I am. I am not coping, I am not fitting the societal expectation, but what can I do as a person? So if it's investment, I'll do it differently. If it's about the family aspect, honestly, we have friends who are even closer. I appreciate family, but you can have a friend. You can have a support system. You know, we talk about support systems. Mm -hmm. A support system that is so there for you. There could be friends, there could be colleagues. So just identifying what then can work within where I am. So find out that support system. It could be a friend. It could be a distant uh, relative. It could even be just support groups. I'm mm -hmm. sure we have support groups for people in, in those various uh, societal groupings, if I put it that way. So seek out for such a, um, I mean, a support group. I know religious organizations have those ones, you know, singles and all that at the workplace. So just find out a support system because the dangerous thing to do in this space of midlife is to live in isolation. Mm. Mm. It's very, very risky that you live alone. So have people around you and, you know, have fun with yourself, you know, mm. <laughs> learn to have and to be comfortable in your own space, sure. you know, take yeah. yourself out, take yourself on a holiday. Mm. I saw something that was a bit extreme. Somebody mm -hmm. wedded themselves. Okay. I'm oh, not I, saying saw that as well. I saw that as well. Yes. I'm not saying we go to that extreme, but it's being comfortable mm. in your own space, accepting mm. uh, society expects, but I'm not there. But what is within, 
my powers, what is within my circles, what is it that I'm able to do. So mm -hmm. support system, find out friends, support groups, uh, join in, you know, even professional groupings because mm -hmm. we, we can find support mm -hmm. in, in, in several areas. But above all, like we said, if it's again weighing down on you, then seek out professional support. But you know, life is cut out differently for everyone. And I think for me is to, can I speak to the society yes, as please, a whole? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make one lesser because the societal expectation is, oh, you are 30, get married, get children, do this and that. People will have different channels and, 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 and you know, journeys in their own life. So let's not put pressure. Let's mm. not put unnecessary pressure. The same thing, you talked about a child. We have couples out there. You know, they are married and they haven't been blessed or given a child. So let's be sensitive as a society. We have become a society that can be very, very insensitive. Let's mm. seek to be sensitive. You never know what journey somebody is walking. Let, let's be sensitive. Let's, let's be careful what we say, what we ask. Sure. Let, let's, is it minding our own business, caring, mm -hmm. but appreciating people's boundary and their private spaces? Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and actually, she, mm -hmm. she's preempted the question I was going to ask you next, <laughs> which is mm -hmm. somewhat similar. Mm -hmm. How Thank do you, you manage those comments, those snide comments? Somehow people always manage <laughs> to make to hit the spot. You know that know. Said thing you're sensitive about, yeah. whether it's the airport mm -hmm. or, <laughs> or the Kitambi uh -huh. or maybe, you know, or now uh, 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 you know just comments like that mm -hmm. how do you navigate that they will even tell you that we want i want to be caught a grandmother and i've been waiting mm. what are you doing around this place but i would say that the worst thing you can do is actually to act to please the society as we say it you have your own life to live do you know your values do you understand yourself mm -hmm. do you know your goals where are you going and what would you like to have for yourself, you see? And therefore, when you look at this, you may not be having a family. You may be a lady, yes, and you do not, you are not married. You are 45. And they're asking you, what's wrong? You are looking beautiful and we have been waiting. What is happening? You know that one cuts you like, because you have been waiting also. <laughs> and, <they're> <laughs> and therefore, and you cannot go telling everybody you know they are not coming my way. Mm. You can, you know, you can mm. only handle it silently like that. Mm. So I think the best thing that will help us is what my colleague is talking about: that you understand yourself, know your values, know your goals, be aware of yourself, mm. and don't act because the society is requesting. Mm. Act because you, it's good for you and for your life. You see. Yeah. And, uh, and I like what she has said, that even at a time like that, when people are really pressurizing you, learn to celebrate yourself. Mm -hmm. Your little achievements, when you get some achievement, go celebrate yourself mm -hmm. and uh, don't ask yourself who else is around. Mm -hmm. It is you and you now. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time, every season has its own ways of, you know, People, people, people to live. So I think the way to get out of that is to know who you are, mm -hmm. to know your values, and to know what uh, what you expect as a person, and to know that your life is not being controlled by the society. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have seen people who have been pressurized to go get married because they are they count the years that at a, at a time like now, anytime you are getting to menopause, mm -hmm. and it's like sure. So they are told quickly get married, and I've seen people getting married very quickly. And if they fail to get a person, the society brings you a man. Now, what happens after that? This is not the man of your choice. So after one year or even less, you start fighting. Who is being fought? It is you, not the society. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to tell the viewers that we, everything boils around you. It is just about you. And because it is you who want to live a good life, then I think it, you are the driver. You can steer your life. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, because actually something celebrating the, the, the mm. wins. Mm. Some may consider them small, but there are certain things society will celebrate mm. and ignore others. So sure. you celebrate whatever it is, whether mm. you've started a new business, true. you've gone back to school, mm. you know, your self-development. Mm -hmm. um, so as we conclude this conversation, mm. what should we not leave this show? What should we leave this show remembering mm -hmm. at the end of the day? 
where overcoming the midlife crisis is concerned. Okay. Thank you. It's been awesome. Um, and then my parting shot in, in terms of midlife crisis is maybe where I began to say that um, it doesn't have to be a crisis. One can navigate the midlife without a crisis. But in the event from our discussion here, you feel like, I think I am in that space, help is available for you. Mm. So it doesn't have to be a crisis. One sure. can navigate those years very well. But in case you're feeling you're down there, please seek out for help. And finally, it's just to encourage the society to be on the lookout because for sure and especially in our country um, it is happening so let's be on the lookout again if you find there could be a sign that someone is going through that crisis please seek to help seek to encourage them to seek help seek to listen at times we are quick to judge and to you know just be there to listen be there to help and like I like to say, as you listen, listen to understand, eh? not to give advice. Eh? Mm. Listen to, ad to understand, not to criticize. Listen to understand, not to give your own opinion, mm. because people are in different spaces. So let, let's be each other's keeper as a society. Mm. So in short, it is possible to navigate without the crisis. If you're there, seek help as a society. Let's be on the lookout and help our people to navigate this phase. Um, rather safely. Thank Julius, you. Julius, if as uh, Catherine has said, you, you, you notice some things, because you had mentioned this earlier about yes. somebody else, they're not acting quite like that. Exactly. So how do you broach that subject or do you mind your business? Well, when you notice something like that, this is when you report, now this is actually when, where you report either to the family members or to people, to key people that can take action so that you save the situation. And actually that's how we identify people with suicidal ideations. Somebody comes and tells you today, I am tired of life. What does that mean? It means that something behind there is talking about suicide, getting out of the world. These are some of the, or somebody tells you like, oh no, I think I don't need to live again. I think I'm so tired and uh, like that. It's important for us to listen, like Catherine is saying, listen to understand. What do you understand about that? There is something wrong going on with this particular person. Now, at that time, do not keep quiet. Go to the family members. Go to a person who can take action. And if you are not, that, that's what we experience, we experience actually in our center, in our therapy center. We get people coming and saying, ah, you're wasting my time. I, I think I should be dead right now. Can you finish with me, please? I am. Um, what happens about that? That one, you know, provokes us to now want to seek help is there a family if there is no family what can we do we have to report to maybe the authority so that we rescue this life because life is precious and therefore uh, in conclusion because i see time is time is up i would like to say that uh, let people who are not go who are going through that, those challenges as Catherine has said not allow themselves to go too far to really get into mental health problems. Let them seek help because there is help. And that's why professionals are there. That's why we are there. We are here to actually give help so that we can live better lives. All right. Thank you. I want to thank my panelists this morning for helping us make sense of the midlife crisis. I've had in studio Catherine Kidaka, a psychologist. We've also had another psychologist in studio and uh, Julia Scuti. He also is a psychology lecturer. Thank you for your insight um, on this subject. Uh, many of us don't think about it. I, let me speak for myself, I really do. I haven't thought about it. But now that we can put a name to it, we can understand it better. Sure. So that's it for your world. My name is Olive Burrows. I've been sitting in for Winnie Lubembe. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.